This lesson is going to be an introduction to money for third graders and we're going to start by helping kids to see money in a visual way that will help them make the connection with numbers and how much value there is compared to a dollar. So we're actually going to start with a beaded number line. So uh, here's my beaded number line. If I were in a classroom, I would actually have this up on the uh, I would have this up on a chalkboard or on a um, magnetic whiteboard and I would be demonstrating but the children would also have one that they could use either with a partner or they could have their own and they would be doing it along with me. I would also pass out um, one coin of each of the ones that we're going to go over today which is a quarter, a dime, a nickel, and a penny. So I would have, if I had the big magnetic ones, that would be great where everyone can see them. But if not, I could just hold up the actual coins. But then the pairs of kids that were working together with the beaded number line would also have uh, the coins to actually put them down. And each student would also have a whiteboard or they could write right on their desk along with the uh, dry erase marker. So the idea is that we're going to help kids to see the value of each coin compared to a hundred because eventually in third grade we were going to want them to be able to count on in order to find change to a dollar and then to five dollars and so on. So this lesson is about introduction to the coins in a, um, in a linear fashion. So I'm going to start with, for example, the penny. And we're going to talk about how that's one cent. One cent is one hundredth of a dollar and we might talk about the, the um, the root word of cent and how it comes from the word hundred in Latin. Um, there are other words that also have the word cent in it. Century is a hundred um, years. Centimeter is one hundredth of a meter. Um, so we could talk about the word cent and how it relates to one hundred. And so we're going to talk about one hundred in terms of our beaded number line. And my beaded number line has one hundred beads on it. And you could pair these off um, when you make them either into groups of 10 or in groups of 5 like this. Now I think the groups of 5 really works nicely when you're thinking about money because 5 is one of our, um, our monetary, monetary coins. But you could also do it uh, with a more traditional number line like this. So like this one is a more traditional number line that most teachers use with their students where it's uh, broken off into groups of 10, so 10 blue, 10 red, 10 blue, 10 red, and so forth. So we can count it as a 10, two 10s, three 10s, and so on, up to 100. But um, you can use either one. Uh, I made mine with five so that we can actually talk about the five coin, the nickel. Um, so we start by talking about one, one out of 100. How many of these pennies would it take to make the whole dollar? So we might have the dollar and have a discussion about that. It's one out of a hundred pieces of a dollar. And we can make the um, relationship to the beaded number line because we have 100 beads. So we might just actually lay it down and mark it right there. That's worth one cent. And we could talk about that a little bit. We would need 100 pennies or 100 beads to make the full dollar. Um, then we're going to talk about just a reminder of the, of the other coins that they've already learned in kindergarten, first, second, and third grade. Actually put the nickel down. How much is the nickel worth? It's worth five cents. So it's the same as five pennies worth. And we can use these to represent our pennies. One, two, three, four, five. And we can actually mark that with our closed pen. That's five cents worth. Okay. Or, and then we can go ahead and and talk about the next coin, the, the, uh, the dime, which is worth 10 cents. Let's find 10 cents out of the dollar on our number line. Um, we've got a 5 and a 5. That makes the 10. And how many groups of 10 would it take to get to the dollar? We could mark that off. So there's one 10 and two 10s and three 10s, if I can get it on there. and so forth, and we can count that as 10, 20, 30. We could actually lay three dimes down. We could do the same with the nickels. We could count off by fives. How many groups of five are in that dollar? How many nickels would it take? It would take 20 nickels, but only half as many dimes, 10, 20, 30, 10 dimes to make it. Um, so we could have some discussions about that. Again, trying to help the kids visualize 
the value because it's really difficult for many kids to visualize the value when they're holding one coin but it's worth 10. We're holding another coin that's actually a bigger coin and it's worth five. Uh, so it's a good way to help them see visually what the value of the different coins are. And then our last coin that I brought today is the quarter. And we're going to talk about that's worth 25 pennies, 25 cents, 25 out of 100. So we're going to actually count that. I can count it by fives. That'd be one nickel's worth, two nickel's worth, three nickel's worth, four nickel's worth, five nickel's worth is one way I could think about it. I could count by fives, five, 10, 15, 20, 25. I could think about tens. That's two tens and five ones. So I can talk about the place value a little bit because we want to kind of bring that out in our discussion as well. Two tens and five ones. So we could count it off like that, a 10, a 10, and a 5. And how many quarters could we use to make the dollar? A lot of kids understand that by the time they're in third grade. But we could have that discussion that we could put down the four quarters, four quarters, four 25s, make the whole dollar. And that's why it's called a quarter, because it's one-fourth or one-quarter of the dollar. So just bringing back some of that previous knowledge in the discussion of things that they've already learned in kindergarten, first, and second grade. So the next thing I'm going to do in the lesson is, with the children is to actually um, use Shel Silverstein's famous poem called Smart. And I would actually read it from the book if I had it available. I don't have mine with me today. But you all also find it on your curriculum. You'll find a, a version of it uh, with some diagrams on it. It's called Smart. So I'm going to read it out loud and I'm going to ask the kids to read it along with me. It's great to have it up on the smart board while you read it. And the poem goes like this. My dad gave me one dollar bill because I'm his smartest son. And I swapped it for two shiny quarters because two is more than one. And then I took the quarters and traded them to Lou for three dimes. I guess he don't know that three is more than two. Just then along came old blind Bates and just because he can't see, he gave me four nickels for my three dimes and four is more than three. And I took the nickels to Hiram Coombs down at the seed feed store, and that fool gave me five pennies for them, and five is more than four. And then I went and showed my dad, and he got red in the cheeks, and closed his eyes and shook his head, too proud of me to speak. I always think it's interesting when you read that to a group of kids because many of them laugh because they get the joke right away and others of them don't really get the joke and that's kind of a formative assessment of who understands the value of the money um, and, and what those trades were. So then I would read it again and we'd take it step by step and the kids would have their coins and they would have their um, beaded number line right in front of them along with their uh, dry erase and dry erase board or their desk. And we would actually think about what happened in the trades there. Because he started with $1. And we would want to make that connection to, one, uh, one, once again, to $1 is the same as 100 cents. And we can represent that using our beaded number line, 100 cents. So his initial transaction, he had 100 cents, or also we would want to model that's the same thing as one dollar just to remind them that's another way that you can write that that they learned in second grade and so he starts with a dollar my dad gave me one dollar bill because i'm his smartest son and i swapped it for two shiny quarters because two is more than one all right so he started with 100 pennies and then he swapped it for two quarters so we've got our two quarters here and how much is how much are two quarters worth? Well, many of the kids know that it's 50 cents, but I would also want them to visualize that using our beaded number line because it's going to help them to make that transaction into counting on money. So we're actually going to find 25 cents worth on our beaded number line again. So again, I could count it by fives or by two tens and five. So five, 10, 15, 20, 25 cents worth is one quarter. And then we'll mark off with our clip another 25 cents. So there's 10, 20, and 25. So he's used up two quarters. He traded for two quarters. Let's talk about 
um, what happened in that transaction. He had 25 and 25, and we can count on and see that that's 50, or we might need some help with our beta number lines to count it. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. So he started with um, 100 cents, and now he only has 50 cents. We might talk about how much he lost. We could think about using the beta number line backwards. He had 100 cents and now he only has 50 cents. How much did he lose? That would be the rest of the dollar. And I like to make those connections really explicit with the kids. So we could count those on our number line if we needed to. He lost 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50 cents in that tra transaction. We might even keep track of it over here. How much did he lose along the way? He lost 50 cents. He has 50 cents now. And then it's the next part of the poem says, and then I took the quarters and traded them to Lou for three dimes. I guess he don't know that three is more than two. So once again, we're going to actually take the three dimes and put them down next to our beaded number line and look at the relationship to a dollar. So again, the dime is worth 10 cents. So we're going to mark it off as 10 cents and then another 10 cents. If I can get it on there. And then another 10 cents, so it's three dimes worth. And we can count that 10, 20, 30. So now he has 30 cents in his pocket. How much did he actually lose so far? What's the rest of the dollar? He lost 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 cents. So he started with a dollar, he's down to 30, he lost 70 cents. The next part of the poem says, Just then along came old blind Bates, and just cause he can't see, he gave me four nickels for my three dimes, and four is more than three. We're going to do the same thing that we did with the other coins. We're going to find where four nickels would be on our beaded number line and mark those off. Um, so we're going to take the four nickels and actually show the relationship on the beaded number line. There's a nickel's worth, five out of a hundred, another nickel's worth, another five out of a hundred, another nickel's worth, five out of a hundred, and another nickel's worth, five out of a hundred. And I would be using those terms with the kids so that they can always be thinking about the coins as being parts of the hundred or parts of the dollar. So now he's got five, 10, 15, 20 cents in his pocket. And we'll think, how much did he lose now? Again, we could use the number line to either count on to a hundred or count back. This time I'll try counting on. He has 20 cents, he's had a hundred, the missing part is all of this. So let's count on and say 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80. He's lost 80 cents. Now, I think it's really important, even though I'm demonstrating for you, as I'm modeling for the students, I would also be asking them the whole time to turn and talk to their partner about it. How much do you think that he's lost so far? Tell your partner what you think. Use your number line to help you. Who thinks they're ready and has an answer for that? So we want to engage the students the whole time we're doing it. But right now, I'm just modeling it for you. And then finally, the last part of the poem says, And I took the nickels to hear him Coombs down at the feed seed feed store, and that fool gave me five pennies for them, and five is more than four. So once again, we're going to talk about the trade. He's down to only five pennies now, and we're going to show that relationship once again using our beaded number line and remembering that each bead is worth um, one cent or one out of the hundred. So there's one, two, three, four, five cents worth, and we would actually put the five pennies there to show that those five cents represent, or that the beads are actually represented by the five pennies. So there's five cents worth. He's left with five cents in his pocket, and the question remains once again, how much did he lose? 
he lost 95 cents. And of course we can count on or count back once again using our beaded number line to see. But I love think putting it out on a chart like this because it really helps the kids to see that I still have a hundred represented. This is what he has and this is what he lost. Okay, so 50, 50 the first time and now 30 and 70, is that still a dollar? Yes, it is. We can use our beaded number line to confirm that. Uh, 20 and 80, still a dollar. 5 and 95, still a dollar. So it helps them to see the relationship of how you can represent money in a linear fashion or using a number line because eventually we want them to actually move into thinking about it on a number line without the beads so that we could say here's zero and here's 100 where would a quarter's worth be? Well, we know half of 100 is 50, and we could break that up into four quarters. There's a 25 cents worth, there's 75 cents worth. So we wanna eventually move in that direction, but this is a great way for them to start with the concrete in order to build to the representation. Before we get into the abstract of pieces of a dollar, parts of a dollar, change to a dollar. So after we've done our whole group lesson, we've done some work, by making the connection with the um, coins and the beaded number line. And we've solved a problem from the SMART poem that we worked through together to help us review the value of the coins and talk about parts of the dollar. They're actually going to play a game, and I'm going to send them off, and this is going to be their working on it piece of uh, what they're going to do with a partner. And each partner is going to get a bag with some coins in it, with just dimes and pennies. So this game is really good because it helps them think about parts of a dollar with tens and ones. It also reinforces what they know about place value. And once they get the hang of the game, it also helps them to think about strategies. Um, it's called Roll to a Dollar. And we're going to roll exactly seven times each, me and my partner. And each time I roll, Whatever number I roll, I have to decide, am I going to take uh, that number of ones or that number of tens? In other words, that number of pennies or that number of dimes. The object of the game is to get closest to a dollar without going over a dollar. If you go over a dollar, you automatically lose that round. So we're going to actually walk through the game, Jake and I, to show you how to play that. So we'll decide who goes first, and we'll do it in a game of odd and even. So, on the count of three, I'll either put out one finger or I'll put out two fingers and you'll do the same. We'll say one, two, three, and then you'll put out either one finger or two fingers. Um, do you want odds or evens? Odds. All right, let's give it. So on one, two, three, we're gonna show. Ready? One, two, three. All right, I have a two and a two, that makes four. So is that even or odd? Evens. All right, so. I have even, so I go first. It's important to help kids uh, develop some strategies like that to decide who's going to go first. You could also roll the die to see who's going to go first. You could do um, uh, rock, paper, scissors. But have them, have them practice a few of those kind of uh, strategies so that they're not arguing over who's going to go first. They can just jump right into the game. And that's a good one to also to review odd and even from second grade. So here we go. I'm going first. And my first roll is a five. Now I'm gonna think out loud when I introduce this to the kids. So I would actually do it what I'm doing now. I would actually have a volunteer come up and play with me so that I can think out loud about the strategies and help them understand things that they need to consider when they're deciding what to take. So my first roll is a five and I'm a little worried that if I take five tens that I might go over a dollar. But, um, I think I'm just going to start with five one. So I'm actually going to take five pennies, one, two, three, four, five, and I'm going to put that on my board here, and I'm going to mark that as five cents, and so I don't have any dimes. I don't need to put a zero there. I could put a zero there if I wanted to, and now it's Jake's turn. He's going to roll. He got a six. So Jake, what are you going to do? I'm going to go with um, six pennies. All right. So, so he's going to count out six pennies. Two, four, six. And he'll put those right over here on his board. And I'm going to help him by marking that down for him since he's my cameraman. So he's got six. And now we're on roll number two. 
This time I got a four. I think I'm going to go with four dimes, 40 cents. 10, 20, 30, 40. I'm going to put that over here on my board. And I'm going to say I have four dimes and I have no, no more. So I have 40, 40 cents. And now back to Jake. What are you going to take? I'm going to try six dimes this time. All right. So. Give it a go. Do, 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 do. One, two, three, four, five, six. And how much money is that worth? 60 cents. 60 cents. So he has 60 in dimes and he has six more. He has a total of 66 cents. We could talk about that along the way as well. One of the things that might also one of the things that might also help the kids, especially the kids who are a little shaky still on the values of the coin, is to actually use their beaded number line to find where they were. So I could do a lot of different things. I could have different color um, clips, for example. I could put our names on clips. I could use Unifix cubes. I could use other kinds of markers. I'm going to put J for Jake and KJ for me. And we could use our beaded number line to see where we are. So first time I got five cents, and then I got 40 more cents, so I'm going to find that. There's 10 more, 20 more, 30 more, 40 more. So I'm going to say, well, here's where I am now. I'm at 45 cents, okay? And Jake is at 66 cents, so I can use, oops, I got the wrong one. So this is me. This is where I am. I have... 45 cents worth, and he has 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 65. Now, one of the things that helps them is to visualize how close to a dollar am I and how close to a dollar is he. Well, he's a lot closer, but we still have five more rounds, so we have to be careful not to go over a dollar, especially Jake, because he's already only 40, uh, 34 cents away. We can count that back, 10, 20, 30, 34, oops, let me get the six, did I, he's only 34 away. All right, so now it's back to me, and I got a one, I'm going with the dime. I'm going to put one dime up here, and I'm going to show that as one dime and no more. And so I have 10 more cents worth, I'm going to move mine up 10, so here's um, five, ten more. And I can count on if I need to. I've got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55 cents. And now it's Jake's turn again. All right. Rolled another five. I'm going to go with five pennies this time. One, two. And why are you going with five pennies this time? Three, four, five. So because I'm only, I have 34 cents to go and I don't want to go over. And if I take five dimes, then I go over. And these are the questions I'd be asking my students along the way, too. Yeah, if you took five dimes, where would that land you? There's 10 more, 20 more, 30 more. Oh, you've already passed a dollar. You already lose. So um, what predictions do you have, class, of what kind of coins Jake will take for the rest of his rolls? And a lot of the kids will say, well, he'll probably end up taking pennies. We'll see, though. We'll see. He might get some low numbers. All right, back to roll four for Mrs. KJ. I got a four this time. Now, I'm thinking I'm already at uh, 55 cents, that's going to put me, and I can look on here if I'm not sure, that's going to give me 40 more, that's going to put me in 95 cents, and I only, ha I still have several more rolls, I think I'm going to go with the four pennies, one, two, three, four, I'm actually going to put those there, and I'm actually going to mark that again, four cents worth, so now let's see where I am, I'm up four more, and here's my 50, so I'm at 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 59 cents, or I could just find the 50 and go back one, or excuse me, yeah, 59 cents, there's my 60, I meant to say. So I still have several more rolls, but if I don't get too big of numbers, I should be okay. It's back to Jake. Go ahead and roll it. Got another four. If he goes up 40 more cents class, 
where will he be? Well, he'll break a dollar, won't he? So we want to kind of be really explicit when we're teaching the game. Uh, we'll ask Jake to do that if he can. If he's having trouble, I might help him, prompt him along to show that that's going to break him over the dollar mark. Well, so he's marking cents. in the four cents. And now it's back to me, and I have three more rolls. Ooh, five. Well, obviously I can't go five tens because that's going to break a dollar, so I'm going to try those pennies again. One, two, three, four, five. There's my five cents. And here's something I'm noticing along the way. Miss KJ, we seem to have uh, run out of pennies. Oh, you're right, Jake. So we're going to talk about what we could do here. I've got a lot of pennies. You've got a lot of pennies. Um, do we have any pennies that we could trade for some of our dimes? Let's see. I've got five here. That's five. And then I've also got five here. Oh, well, that makes 10 cents worth. All right, so I'm going to actually put another dime over here on my tens chart to show that I actually traded two fives for a dime and that'll give us some more pennies to um, to use in our game and I also see that you have some uh, combinations for example you have six pennies here and then you have four pennies here that makes another ten doesn't it so we can actually put that other dime over here to show that you have another dimes worth right there so um, let's see I believe it's your turn. All righty. Roll to five. Well, if I go with five dimes, I'm going to go over. So go with my five pennies again. One, two, three, four, five. Put those right there. Grab the marker. Put it in my five cents. Putting it in the ones column. Okay. Uh, looks like I have two more rolls. And once again, I'm going to see if I can remember where I am. I'm at 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 59 cents. Oh, I forgot to add that other five last time, didn't I? So let's go ahead and move that up five more. There's one, two, three, four, five. So that puts me at 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 64 cents and I could confirm that with my actual coins if I needed to. I think that dime got put in there by accident. All right, back to me on my sixth roll, second to the last roll. Well, uh, again, I know that five is that big number. It's going to take me over. I'm going to go with the five pennies or five ones. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to actually put five cents here in the ones column. And I'm going to move up five here. So I'm at one, two, three, four, five more cents. And I can see that I have 10, 20, 30, 31 cents before I get to the dollar. So maybe I'm going to hope for a big number this time. All right, Jake, it's your turn. Roll another six. I got to high numbers today, so I'm going to go back to my pennies. Three... Four, five, six. Put that in the cents column. Grab the marker. Put my six on the board. And back to you, Miss KJ. All right, I need a big roll here because I'm not very close to a dollar. Uh, five's not bad. Five's the second highest I could get. I could talk about that too, couldn't I? Again, I can't take the five dimes. I can't take five tens, but I'm going to go back to those ones. One, two, three four, five, and mark it here. And your final roll, Jake. All right, got my, can't go with three dimes again. It looks like we forgot to move Jake's um, marker a, a couple of times, so we counted it up and figured out that he was at 86. So he only needs 14 cents in order to get closer to a dollar. Um, and so we can see already that he's closer to a dollar, but he's going to go ahead and take his last roll of three pennies, except he doesn't have three pennies. So what do you think you should do, Jake? I'm going to swap out my pennies again, take my five here, slide that over, and take my five here, make that ten cents, which is a dime, put it in my ten cents column. And put your three here. And then here. I'm going to put my three pennies back in there, 
and then mark it in my sense. And I can see that I have 80, 80, uh, what do I have? 89 cents now. Well, let's check and make sure. So let's move it up three more, right, for you. One, two, three. And mark it. There's, so how far away from the dollar are you? Well, you can see that there's 10 right here, and then there's one. So if you take off, there's 90 right here, and then so 89 right there. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I have mine in the right place. But I noticed I have a lot of pennies over here. And I'm going to go ahead and do some exchanging on those as well. So I have five here and five more. That gives me another dime's worth. So, so far I have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. I can't make another dime exchange. So I'm stuck at 74 for my last roll. All right, so I finally got my marker in the right place and I confirmed that with my dimes. I have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, or seven tenths. And one, two, three, four, I have 74. I've marked it off here on my uh, beaded number line as well. So I have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and four more. There's my 74. So I am 10, 20, 25, 26 away from the dollar, whereas Jake is only 10, 11 away from the dollar. So he's much closer, his total is greater, and he wins this round. So today's lesson had quite a bit of um, whole group in it, but the whole group was not me just standing and talking, it was me talking and prompting and questioning and scaffolding and allowing kids to use real concrete materials and make connections to how you would represent that. We talked about using it on the number line or we talked about using place value with the place value game with tens and ones, that they're representing it. They're also using the real coins, which is a concrete material, the beaded number line, which is moving towards a representation of using a number line. So we're making those connections all along the way as we're doing the lesson. We're asking kids to to uh, do it along with us so they're very engaged everyone's engaged everyone's accountable we're asking them throughout the lesson to turn and talk to each other to notate things together how will we represent that together uh, so I modeled how you use a number line for thinking about the value of money and then I taught a game with a partner now I would allow the kids to go off with partners and I would be very strategic about that in deciding who part who to partner so with. they're going to go off and play the game with a partner and they're going to use the coins they're going to use the beaded number line they're going to use a recording sheet which I actually have uh, ready for them I just didn't have it with me today so I created my own and that's fine two kids can create their own as well they're going to play the game at least one round uh, and then we're going to come back and talk about it because it's important to do that math talk. We need to have some discussion about strategies they used, um, parts of the dollar, what was the rest of the dollar. We want to bring out some ideas, once again revisiting those ideas that they, that they got a chance to practice as they played the game with their partner. We want to bring out those ideas once again as a whole group. So there's our reflect and our connect part of the lesson. I might decide today to go ahead and follow up with a formative assessment by giving them a word problem. So this is the word problem that I'm going to give them today. And I'll read it out loud. It says, Harry has quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies in his pocket. He takes out five coins and holds them in his hand. How much money could Harry be holding? How do you know? It's actually one of the problems that's in your unit of study. Uh, you could make up your own word problem. I'm going to use that as a formative assessment. So I'm going to ask the kids this time to work alone and see what they can do with it. They can still use their coins to help them. They can still use their beaded number line to help them. Um, but they're going to record their answer and they're going to show how they know. So we're going to talk about, well, First of all, before you go off and try this problem on your own, what do you know about Harry? Well, we know that he had quarters and dimes and nickels and pennies. Do we know how many? No, we don't know that yet, but that's okay. We know that he had a collection of them. What else do we know from the problem? We know that he took out uh, five coins. So, for example, he could have taken out five pennies. That would be really easy, wouldn't it? Five cents. But he could have taken out, say, three dimes and two pennies, or he could have taken two dimes and... Uh, 
and three nickels. So there are different combinations he could come up with. And we want to have a discussion about that. So, and then we're going to let them go off and try it on their own. What are some possible answers that he could have by holding any five coins that he had available in his pocket? And that could be a formative assessment. And it can also be the beginning of our math talk tomorrow when we come in. That might be the problem we start with. Yesterday we worked on a problem at the end of the math period. Let's talk about the problem. Let's talk about some of the possibilities that you came up with. And let's confirm that they all would be five coins uh, using the possible coins that he had. What are the different values of those amounts and have some discussion there as well.